Um, and in fact, that building will um, maybe even collapse in the future. At the very least, parts of it are going to be burned out and it's not be, going to be as good for cover. And if you want to hear more about that, you can watch Worth Its Points Cost. Is it Worth Its Point Cost in Tank Room in episode uh, 5 or 6 or something, where I cover the Flamethrower Infantryman. And so here I'm trying to sneak up on this Panzer IV because I see an opportunity. I don't really see anyone guarding it. Um, certainly the Panzer IV is guarding itself, and oh, suddenly there's a bunch of infantry, so I tell my guy to sprint, and I'm like, oh, I hope he does it, and he gets out his grenade and checks it, and kaboom! Engine destroyed and crew contused. But um, unfortunately, engine destroyed is not going to do anything. If it was engine on fire, that'd be great, because then it would later burn out and kill everyone, and the tank. But right now, engine destroyed just means it's not going anywhere, which is good, but um, unfortunately it's not going anywhere guarding the middle point, so that's bad. In fact, it might have even been better if we had a chance to drive it off with like an AT gun or a tank or something, but um, in any case, an immobilized tank is in a fair amount of trouble because uh, it's easy to attack in all sorts of ways. You can attack it in whatever way you want to. Oh, I'll say I have an assault infantry squad over here that I sense, so that's good. Um, uh, it's easy to flank with your own tank. It's easy to hit from the side with an AT gun that you line up the shot. It's easy to attack with infantry. It's not going anywhere. But, um, of course, the flip side to that is it does make your opponent very cognizant of the vulnerability of his tank, so he often uh, protects it very well. Um, t Lollibo buying AT-3485 because he wanted to do some heavy tank warfare. Uh, and finally, I'm repositioning my AT gun. I find this very nice sandbag embankment, so I figure he'll move over there. And uh, hopefully we'll get some sort of angle on this middle point while my men move around to the sides. And boom! Thank you, T-34, 85 main gun, something, something destroyed. And I don't know what he was doing with this uh, little jeep, his little Kubelwagen, but um, he runs into my assault squad and just, like, I don't know, I think there's a scene in Inglorious Bastards like this. Yeah, the Germans just driving along and suddenly whoops, ran into the wrong people, and of course this blows the cover on my assault squad, but I was actually kind of happy about this, because um, that means he's not going to be paying attention to my submachine gun infantry moving in on the point. And moreover, I wasn't super worried, because assault guys are just awesome. It is very hard to kill them. Um, so he sends over his light tank, and um, also I took this as an opportunity to split my assault men up so that when he came to attack me it would be tough and this is why I love assault infantry. It's like they can do anything. Although to be fair, submachine gunners could have done that. Um, pretty much anyone with an AT grenade could have done that. My opponent not playing at his best right there. But um, you know, he saw, he knew I had an expensive powerful squad of infantry coming up so he bought a very cheap light vehicle that can shred infantry and he sent it right at me and in some ways that's the right thing to do, right? He wants to catch me while I'm out in the open before I get move in on his point or anything. Um, my flamethrower guy dies, I tried to kill the tiger but uh, unfortunately he was wise enough and somehow all my submachine gun infantry in that trench died. I have no idea what did that and um, Maybe if the, you were watching the death messages in the upper left, you can tell me. But um, my opponent just moved too fast with that Panzer II he sent against my assault infantry, and he just got himself killed. And um, partially that was his fault for moving in too fast, and partially it was my fault for being smart and splitting up my assault infantry and being ready for an assault uh, from anything. Because once you're spotted, uh, you can be fairly sure your opponent's going to send something. And I don't know why that gunner was facing backwards on the Tiger, but it sucks because he saw my guy sneaking up otherwise. I might have been able to disable the Tiger or even kill it, but, you know, that's life, repositioning my AT gun. Maybe I'll be able to hit something now. Um, but yeah, I still have some assault infantry. I told them to go prone in that trench. They're not going to get spotted, all right, if they're prone, because uh, they're in a trench. These They have to be basically perpendicular to the trench to spot your men prone in there, so that's handy. Um, but I saw his infantry walk past, so just like I'm playing Metal Gear Solid or some sort of stealth game, I'm like, all right, move, 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 although um, I do get spotted halfway through, so it turns into a firefight. But assault infantry are no strangers to a firefight, and in fact the only reason I get cut down is because I'm fighting paratroopers and their FG-42s are very good uh, guns. Um, against submachine gunners or riflemen or something, I would have easily been able to get to cover before that fight was over. And of course he's got all sorts of people in this house making me wish it was still on fire, so uh, that's the end of that assault. All in all, um, I don't know if I killed more than I lost. I probably lost more than I killed, but it was a pretty big pain in their butt, and it did give my ally a chance to attack the middle. and. Um, this disabled Panzer IV is going down. Kaboom! Engine destroyed and hull destroyed is what you want. Hull destroyed takes it out of commission forever. Hull crushed takes it out of commission for a while while they repair it. But uh, this one submachine gun infantry man <laughs> managed to mow down almost the squad, and so I'm not done with him. I want to keep him alive. 
Um, you see that grenade tried to hit him, but I got him out of there, getting him behind a rock to heal up. Every infantryman is precious. You don't need to buy assault infantrymen or paratroopers to make them useful. Pretty much anyone is useful, except maybe a rifleman, because they don't come with AT grenades off the bat, but if you, had a, if you have a way to scavenge for AT grenades or something, um, even a rifleman can be super useful. And in fact, um, versus assault infantry, sometimes the lighter infantry are more useful because um, you feel you don't feel as bad about throwing them away, and they can also run faster because they're not wearing a heavy armor. So here's there's a tiger over there, and I figure, hey, maybe I can take this Pack 40 AT gun and kill the uh, tiger. I was actually trying to kill a Panzer IV, not having realized that I uh, killed the whole, um, destroyed the whole. But um, also, I would want to take the tiger. My ally's trying to flank the tiger with his T-34, but uh, that totally didn't work. He got spotted, so he just had to take the shot. And he took the shot, didn't penetrate. Surprise, surprise, tiger's got a crap ton of armor. The slope is really bad. I mean, you look at the tiger, it's basically a tissue box with a gun on the top. But um, it makes up for it by being an extremely well-reinforced tissue box. It's certainly a tissue box that displays job and engineering at its finest. You know, the tigers were submersible up to like three feet underwater. Not like three feet of water, but like three feet over the tiger's like head or something. It had some sort of, I don't know, breathing tube, or maybe it was just airtight, watertight. You could drive it through water is what I'm saying. That is just the most amazing thing in the entire world. Maybe some things are more amazing. The tiger weighed so much that they were scared to drive it through houses and stuff, through buildings, because they were afraid if they drove over a, uh, a basement, they would fall through the floor and their tiger would get stuck. So they didn't drive through buildings, even though they could have. What other tiger facts do I know? I think that's pretty much it. That's basically everything I know about tigers. Um, actually, they can interbreed with lions, and then you get ligers. But... I might be thinking of a different tiger. In any case, I commandeered the Pack 40 and fired like three shots into the engine of that tiger, but it, it's some, I know, some bizarre combination of luck and basically just luck um, kept it alive. It, I was I was really hoping for a penetration there, I gotta, gotta admit, um, but to no avail. And that panther knocked out my allies T-34, so things are not looking so hot, although we did hold the middle point for so long that we have 562 points versus their 304 with 13 minutes remaining, so um, maybe things not so bad, but um, nope, I will hold off on my rant. There will be a rant later in this video. Are you excited? I don't know. I wonder how you say rant in other languages. That's a funny word. Rant. Rant. I'm buying a sniper. Because um, why did I buy a sniper? Oh, I kind of want to move in on the middle point. I was tired of playing Hokey Pokey or whatever with the rightmost point, and I wanted to start supporting my ally in the middle, but um, my main problem was I was worried about what was around there, and secondarily, I was worried about infantry that would stop my own infantry from sneaking up behind his tank. So a sniper is the ideal solution to both those problems. Um, an officer will show you who's around there, and maybe if he's got a certain number of infantry, you can play Splinter Cell, or Metal Gear Solid, or No One Lives Forever, or Deus Ex or Hitman or something. I guess not Hitman. Hitman is more about stealing people's uniforms. But you can play your favorite stealth game and avoid the enemy guards and the enemy patrols if you have an officer to reveal them. But uh, the other option is just to buy a sniper, and in addition to revealing the enemy patrols, you can shoot them. So you can play um, No One Lives Forever 2, or Deus Ex with slightly different modifications. Augmentations, not modifications. Alright, so sniper. And almost immediately I get my sniper to work um, shooting people. I don't shoot that guy in the bush because someone's already shooting at him, so I figure he's gonna die. I shoot that guy and boom! You see that red little circle fill up, and once the circle crosshair fills up, uh, the sniper fires and typically kills whoever he hits. Uh, assault infantry will sometimes survive if he doesn't hit them in the head, and sometimes he's a bitch and doesn't hit them in the head, but uh, pretty much everyone is dead. Um, if they're prone, sometimes they'll miss. You see that? Um, He's prone, and it went right over, so I'm watching again, and kaboom, he misses again. Um, sometimes as the sniper has a bad angle, he's not going to hit, so it's a time to tell him to shoot someone else. This guy is on the wrong side of the sandbags, and um, he pays for it with a sniper shot to the foot, which is fatal, 